90 Day Fiance, Season 6, Episode 14. I'm a little late, forgive me, but I'm here. So I'm going to get right into it as always and give my commentary and feedback. Like it, love it, or don't watch it. So Jovi and Yara, he wants her to loosen up and have fun. Again, I'm looking at my notes because I forget everything. Um, he takes her to a Russian restaurant, which is nice because, you know, she's homesick. And it to her, that was like really fancy because... I guess over there they don't have something as fancy because she was really, really impressed with this restaurant. So the whole time they're eating and having good conversation, they're drinking. Jovi keeps chiming in with the, I hope the fun Yara comes out. I hope the fun Yara stays out. I like the fun Yara. I don't like the boring Yara. And it's like, would you stop? Enjoy the moment and stop giving her extra commentary she didn't ask for and that is not needed or warranted. Um... And she's just like, okay, Jovi, stop saying that. Because it's getting annoying and you're going to ruin the moment. Um, so then they decide to go to a strip club. Now, you already know that's Jovi's scene. The strip club, that was a whole problem with Yara last season. And he still wants to take her there. So she can try to have the same fun he wants to have. And she's telling him, I'm not comfortable. Why do we have to go there? Why do I go with my husband to a strip club? to watch other naked girls dance that's not my thing but i'm gonna go anyway because we're having a good time um so they get there and he's excited he has the ones he's drinking his drink and he's like mesmerized and she's just sitting there they don't do a time elapse of how long they were there um at the strip club but it seems like they've been there at least 30 45 minutes because he had the same damn drink and she's like, Jovi, I'm ready to go. Like, I did what you want me to do. I'm uncomfortable. I'm ready to go home. Like, we're parents now. And he's like, oh, where's the fun, Yara? He's with the bullshit again. And she's like, stop. I'm ready to fucking go. Like, let's go. Then the stripper comes, and she's dancing in front of him, and he's still sipping his mojito. And like a jackass, he takes, he goes to the stripper. Are you insane? Like, we here together, but we not here together. How you blow a kiss to her like that? Like, in front of Yara, and you already know how she is. So, she's like, are you fucking kidding me? Slaps the shit out of him. Wah! And he was like, okay. And then she leaves, but he's still standing watching the strip. And I'm like, what kind of jackass are you? Like, are you slow or retarded? I don't know. No, let me not say those words. Are you uh, mean or not really all there when it comes to respecting your wife. Okay, I'm stop. Asuelu and Kalani. He. I get why he tried. But it's like you can't with your family. Especially Tammy. And your, well, your mother. Especially both of them. So they go to the house for Christmas. And they do like a white elephant. And if you don't know what a white elephant is. It's when you just buy random kind of gag gifts and then you can steal it from somebody else so you get the gift you want but it's all in fun so as soon as kalani and the mother come to the house i'm, I'm sorry tammy and the mother comes to kalani and asuelo's house tammy's like oh look how big this house is i bet you it's a lot of money mom i wonder how much do they pay and it's like stop stop so big low is in the house with the kids the mother's there they're having dinner or whatever and they were laughing because they were talking about... I saw those family thought an actual white elephant was going to be in the room. So, it's all going good. And then Tammy starts with the bullshit. Oh, I swear though, um, this is a big house. You have a lot of money for this house. Then the mother starts with, oh, I swear though, I will, um, I swear, um, Kalani, I swear the wants, um, to have big family. You're going to have big family. I have nine kids. And it's like, where your fucking nine kids is taking care of you? Like you got nine kids and you still pressuring this one. Then it gets just, they stop the conversation and then they go into the living room and start the white elephant gift exchange. They're having a good time. Everything's working out. Then Tammy chimes in again with the, are you going to send mom money? Cause she's going back to Samoa. And he's like, I told you to be nice. I told you to behave. Like, basically, bitch, shut the fuck up because I done told you. Stop playing with me with this in this money situation. And no matter what you see as a house, you don't know what their bills are. You don't know if their parents are paying half. You don't know any of that. So stop it. Um. 
So the mother's still talking about, oh, you still have to send money. You still have to send money. He goes, I'll send you what I have if I have extra. But, but my kids are not going to starve. I'm like, yes, I swear who finally sticking up and like getting your big boy drawers on. So it goes from that to um, the gift exchange. And I swear Lou said, I have a special gift for my wife. And she's like, uh-oh. And she gives him, he gives her a pink baby blanket which means he wants a daughter or another baby she told him three episodes ago she don't want to have another baby right now because she just has two and they just stopped breastfeeding and like you know just y'all can't afford what you got and this is not your culture in america because you have no one to watch them the money is different and he's still pushing she says, I can't even believe we're having this conversation right now. Like, you have got to understand my body is not an incubator and I'm not going to keep having babies for you and because you're poor. So, it just goes left and then I swear, um, Kalani's telling her, I don't have a baby. I don't want to talk about this. This is me and his problem. And then Colini, the sister, is like, she doesn't want to have any more babies. Let, let them talk about it as a married couple and Tammy and the mother. Why is she talking to me? Why is she talking to me? Why is she talking to me? I'm talking to Kalani. I'm not talking to Kalini. I'm like, oh, shit. Here we go. Then Tammy starts getting loud. Out of nowhere, I swear a little... Psh, tackles Tammy. Out the house, shit goes left. And you hear the mother saying, don't talk to me again. You're like, d um, you're you're not here for me. And it just goes way, way left. Um, Mike and Natalie. I just need them to break up and just stop. Natalie is is at from the blow up they had last week about Natalie having a surgery and not telling Mike anything. Um, he's calling her, he's texting her, and no answer. So he calls his mom, and his mom is like, "Mike, give her some money and let her go back to her country." And you know, his mom was like, "She's a scammer. She's a snake in the grass, and she's this and she's that. Just really talking nasty and mean about her." And it's just crazy it's literally crazy so um and mike's mom is just saying leave her divorce her you don't love her she doesn't love you and what i like is that mike didn't agree with his mother he was like well you know you have your feelings i still love her they still love there and yada yada boom boom i like that he stood up for her and he didn't have that high pitched voice and then um you know, you see Natalie at her friend Juliana's house and they're in the bed together and she's rubbing her arm. I'm like, are y'all lesbianized? Are y'all lesbianized? Are y'all, like, lesbianist? What's going on here? But, you know, we don't know. We gonna see. Um, Andre and Chuck. Now, I just... Like, I don't... I don't... They keep trying to force this union that's not going to happen. Chuck... Have your business. Tell your kids, I'm giving Andre this. You have that. And whether he, I'm adding him to the family instantly, whether I'm giving him money, that's not your business because you're still getting paid. I'm not shorting you a dime, nickel, or penny. So stop worrying about what I'm doing with my money. So Chuck is like, I want to have another family barbecue and I want them to get along. I'm like, yeah, I've had five different events and it has not worked out, including two weddings. Let it go. Um, and Chuck takes Libby out and he's like, Libby, I, I really want this to happen. She's like, dad, you kind of can't. But he said, and Chuck said, I agree with Andre. Like Andre's not a fool here. Our side is. And I'm like, but whatever. They get to the event. They start with the money because Charlie comes in. And then next thing you know, for the next episode, you see Andre get up and he duffs Charlie down and he has him in the headlock. And I don't know if he punched him or not, but it's a melee way too. Uh, Sunday, we're going to see how this going to work out. Because I don't think it is. Especially at physical. Like they, they've been to his face, but they haven't been like physical. They haven't been fighting like that. Um, Julia and Brandon. Julia wants a baby, a house, no more farm, a job. Brandon didn't make a lot of money. All to happen within a year. It's like you can't speak English good and you don't have a job. You can't expect so but so much of him. Um, and I feel like when they go to these countries and get these women, I would love to know what they are what they are telling them when they come over here. Or is it a perception from over there to the U.S.? Everybody makes a lot of money. You, th that has to be the perception 
or you have to be telling her something different that makes her think you are um, daddy dollars. Because she's like, well, we go to the grocery store, we have to get chips, and we have to get cookies, and we have to get juice. And it's like, what's dinner? Like, I mean, and I... I can't even, like, they're, they're 27. I got married when I was 24. I wasn't buying, I, yes, I bought snacks. But that wasn't in my cart, in my grocery, in my grocery cart. Like, I don't, I, everybody's different, clearly. And I have a hard time with that. So let me just say that I have a hard time not understanding common sense. Yes, you have chips, cookies, soda, snack cakes in your cart. But you also have chicken breasts, chicken legs, steak pork chops to cook dinner and have a meal like are you gonna eat chips for dinner i but okay and then brandon's friends come over that she didn't like the girl that told julia basically why are you here and are you here this for money all that kind of stuff and she's just looking at her like she he doesn't want a baby he just started his life and he just moved out like slow down and she, I'm not here for you. You don't talk to me. I am his wife. And he do what I say. Happy wife or no happy at all. Okay. Anyway. Angela and Michael. Angela has gotten a surgery. She has lost 80 pounds, I believe she said. Her and Skyla go to a thrift shop to buy clothes, which is cute. And, you know, to show her her new weight loss. She was from a size 22, I think she's a size 16 now, or 14. And um, Skylar's still like, I'm not giving you no egg, mama, so stop asking me, mama. And Angela's like, come on, Skylar, come on, <laughs> come on, Skylar. You know how Angela talk. And her and Michael talk, and he's like, Angie, baby, I've done all you asked me to do. I've, I've you know, been there for you, I've supported you. You've gone through all these surgeries that I didn't want you to go through. Is it my turn now to ask you to start the process for a baby? Because I need, I want a baby. I have to have a baby as part of my culture, and it's for me. And he's like, I'm gonna go to the doctor to do the cryo freezing of his sperm. And Angela's like, Well, as long as I'm in the room with you, and better not be no other bitch in the room, Michael. So she goes, Well, you're gonna have to masturbate in the cup. And Michael's like, What? I don't know how he thought they got the sperm out, but I mean, okay. So he goes in the room and Angela's there and he ejaculates into the whatever. They freeze it. And then um, Angie's like, I'm going to try one more time and then I'm not trying no more. And that's it. It's like, okay. It's not going to work out for them with this baby situation. She needs to just let him, whether it's IVF into someone else's body, someone else's body. But then I don't think she had an egg. To give. I think that was the problem, right? And she wants a bloodline relative. And I just don't see how that's going to happen. And are we wasting our time here? 90 Day Fiance Season 6 Episode 14. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.